Hello and welcome back to our introduction to programming and problem solving series. Um, in this particular video, we're looking at types of programming languages. Um, so there are basically two types of programming languages, the low level language and the high level language. So there are a lot of programming languages, but um, a developer or a software or a coder, a software engineer or a software developer or a coder would choose amongst the programming language what they feel they want to use for their career or what they feel is needed for their career. So um, you don't get um, a developer or someone that knows it all, but um, they choose um, based on what they need for the task at hand. Yes. So um, as we know that the programming languages are used to control over the performances of a machine or a computer, they are basically two types. We have the low level languages and then we have the high level languages. So the low level programming language um, this language is the most understandable language used by computers to perform the operation. So this is the language that the computer understands, actually. Um, this um, program instructions or this language is written in what we call the binary form or what uh, we can call um, zeros and then ones. Let me use the pen here. So uh, they are written in the binary form, what we call zeros and then ones. So Low-level programming languages are closer to hardware or to the hardware and provide more control over the um, computer system resources such as the memory and the CP. So they are less affected than the high-level languages and are often used for tasks that require higher performance, direct hardware manipulation, or system-level programming. So um, the low-level programming languages can you further categorize into two. You have the machine language and then the assembly language. So a machine language consists of strings of binary numbers that is zeros and ones, just as the ones that you can see in the images here. Yeah. So um and it is the only language that the processor directly understands and executes. So um, it is the language that the CPU um, directly understands and executes. So the CPU doesn't understand the high-level languages. So anything that it's high-level doesn't understand, there is a conversion that goes on before the CPU will be able to interpret and then execute it. So it's a specific to the architecture of a hardware and it's not portable between different types of computers. So um, um, all that we are trying to say is that um, the machine language is specific or it's unique to each hardware and then not portable between two types of computers. Yeah. So um, the uh, zeros and ones for, let's say, um, a Nintendo game will be different from that of um, a laptop. And then as such, um, these instructions, um, since they don't use the same CPUs, um, it carries different uh, meanings or might not do the same work here as it's doing there. So a machine language is also known as the first generation of programming language. Characteristics of machine languages. One, um, we say that uh, it has the binary format. Machine language consists entirely of binary instructions and data. Um, two, there is no abstraction. So there is no abstraction layer between the programmer and the hardware. It's straight to the machine. There is no uh, intermediary or anything that stands between them. It goes straight to the hardware. It is processor specific. So a machine uh, language is tailored to a specific CPU architecture and cannot run on different hardware without modification. So as I said earlier, um, uh, a machine language tailored for a Nintendo or a PS4 um, or not um, fit or cannot or the same instruction cannot be executed on that of a laptop because they are different hardware's um, usage. So machine language is not typically used by humans directly as it is extremely difficult to write and understand. However, it's the code executed um, by the computer when the program is run. So we are saying that the machine language is typically uh, not used by humans. So humans because it's quite difficult or it's quite hard to work with humans, we don't usually use this language because it's difficult to understand, interpret. We are going to have a lot of zeros and ones, which they all have different meanings. And then working with this is going to be very hard. But um, it is the code that or it is the instruction that the CPU of the computer understands the most.
So um, the second type of low-level language is what we call the assembly language. Um, the assembly language is another low-level language um, because the program instructions written in these languages are close to machine languages. Um, it is just one step above the machine language. So assembly language is also known as the second generation of programming languages. And this language basically uses um, mnemonics, code, symbolic uh, codes like add for addition in place of the zeros and ones. So uh, the assembly language is then converted into the machine code, that is zeros and ones, by what we call the assembler. And the resulting program is referred to as an object code. So all that we are saying is that the assembly language um, is a language ahead or one step of the zeros and ones or the binary language. So um, if we have, let's say, zero, one, 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 to see just a typical example, and then what it means is add. Uh, yeah. So on the binary or on the machine language, you're going to have this. But with assembly language, instead of writing all of this, we could replace this with the word add. A, D, D. And then that's the work. So characteristics of assembly language. So we are saying that instead of writing binary code, programmers use symbolic representations of machine instructions. Example, move for moving data, add for addition. Processor specific. Just like machine language, assembly language is specific to a CPU architecture. So we have the times, uh, ACS, Expo. So um, um, the language for my um, assembly language is all the assembly languages are specific to CPU architectures and it cannot be used for a different architecture. Um, three, it requires an assembler. So before a machine or before the processor can execute it, he has to understand the assembly language. In order to do that, we need the assembler to convert the assembly language or the assembly code into the machine code. Low-level control. So it gives program, programmers fine-grained control over hardware and system, soft, uh, system resources, such as memory, CPU, registers, and hardware. So use it. The assembly language is used for tasks that require direct hardware manipulation or extreme optimization, such as operating system, embedded systems, and device drivers, performance critical applications. So just as the machine um, language, um, we need it for direct hardware manipulation.